bus, you don't just step off the tour bus. You step off the plane with a kayak and a paddle and gear and you're usually meeting somebody or renting a car and you know where you want to go. You're not following a path that's already been traveled. You're, you're going out into the woods. You're, you feel less like a tourist and you feel more like this global citizen, this global traveler. You're not just putting on a river, kayaking on the bottom of it, and taking off and going home. I mean, there's so much more involved. You're hiking around stuff, you're hiking to get in, you're hiking to get out, you know, you're getting on planes, you're driving in vans, you're driving in buses. It's sort of a neat sport to be a part of because you're not just a paddler, you're not just doing that activity. You know, it's a whole, whole series of steps to get to and from that river, and sometimes those are some of the most memorable things that happen. One of the best feelings ever is to get to a rapid that I've been looking at for a while that I haven't run. And so look at it to be able to understand it from other rapids that I've run before and similar problems that I've seen before on the water. Over the years you, you learn the language, you learn how to describe the rapids, you learn the flow of the rapids, and you learn that there's a channel through there and the only way through there is becoming a part of it rather than fighting against it. Kayaking is like the purest thing. I mean, when you're on the water, th that's it. Like, I mean, there's nothing else going on. You are 100% focused on what you're doing, and that's such a, a refreshing and great feeling. I mean, just to, to dedicate 100% of your being at that moment to that pursuit. Run in the mid gorge, and uh, we're here with Simi and my friend Jake, and uh, we're gonna try to paddle it before it gets dark. There's a million things to do out there and you know if creaking was all there was to do I don't think really I could handle it. After a hard day of creaking and your nerves are shot and you've swam and you don't want to get back into a boat and you've really gotten handled the last day it's really nice the next day to you know take out a different boat and go play in a feature with some friends. We're hanging strong, got good sushi in our belly and we're about to throw down Donkey Kong style. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> Whether you're going the next drainage over or to another hemisphere, you're always following the water, you're always following the season that's going to bring the water. And in so doing, a lot of adventure comes along with it. And it's, it's, it becomes more than the pursuit of kayaking itself. It becomes this, this whole migration to the water. I've heard talk they were near it. Yeah, we've seen some paddlers and a few boats lying around, but who's to say we're just not going to spend day four in the car? I mean, it was 14 hours yesterday, 18 hours the day before that. The day before that, crackhead stole all our stuff. Um, as you can tell, we've had a little trouble this morning too. It's delayed us, but I think we're finally on the right track. And pending we don't hit another buffalo in the run, I think we're going to be fine. What happened this morning? Oh, a little incident here, you know, going to the rec center and uh, one thing led to another. Remy backed out in a parking lot the size of a football field with two other cars in it and managed to hit the one obstacle in the way, a big lamppost. Hit it so hard that the lamppost and the flower bucket on top fell down and landed in the back window back there. Um, Remy's probably not going to find it funny for the next few days, but I'm past it. It was just so, it was above the top that I just had to laugh, like, I'm sorry. Like, it's just crazy. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was awesome. familiarity uh, and intimacy with places that are just so unique and that's what's so cool you just wouldn't get that I mean you'd get that with maybe hiking or rock climbing but it sort of it shares that with any sort of outdoor pursuit and it, it's it's really it's amazing and like I said it sort of it shrunk the world What you had just recorded earlier was this ritual ceremony of welcome known to be the Māori as the Pohiri. Well, the Pohiri started off with the sound of the conch shell. The conch shell was used in days of old to signify to the home village their visitors, like yourselves, had arrived. <laughs>
rest of there, please? Um, can you take a message for me? <laughs> um, can you tell them that five kayakers would like to get dropped into the Arahura tomorrow? Pretty hardcore. Um, it's been raining pretty hard last night, so it's um, pumping, pumping. We were hoping to get on the Wickham today, but it's still raining and the helicopter won't be able to fly, so we have to flag that. But no, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day for sure. We may not be the smartest, but we get the job done. <laughs> Silly, silly boys. <laughs> Thank you. 
got some good rain, now some good weather, so do some creaking around Pucon. Uh, a small little tributary on the other side of the mountain from the Palagin. Excited to throw down some sleeping bags on the deck of this here uh, ferry and take a nap. I haven't been sleeping too much recently, but uh, got off the Petroy. Petroy. Um, today, to big volume, big volume water, and um, now we're going even bigger in volume water as the the food has been hit with rain for like I don't know the past couple of weeks and it's gonna be flooded. No matter where you live or what class of water you paddle, you know, you're always at the mercy of the elements. You're always at the mercy of where there's water, you're always at the mercy of where the drainage or the wave that you're trying to go to is located. Um, and as you progress as a paddler, this search to try to find this perfect wave or this perfect river that would be the best for your ability on that day just takes you further and further away from your home and after a while you realize that this search is the same as you know food and air it's a need in your life and once you realize that it's a need you realize that you're the same as every other species on this planet we simply just migrate to best suit their needs <laughs> <laughs> 